What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, we're having a great day. Right behind me, as you can see, we have the 2014 GT500 Super Snake. Now, in this episode, it's been part two of our 2020 GT500 versus 2014 GT500 Super Snake comparison video. It's a lot of words when you think about it, GT500 Super Snake, and then you gotta count in the years, right? But this is the last of the manual GT500s, and with that, it's an entirely different driving experience than the new one. This is raw, and I want to show you guys exactly how this car compares on the road versus the all new 2020. If you're not familiar with our GT500 Super Snake, it has 1000 horsepower, it uses 91 octane, and I mean, it's just raw. The, the entire experience, it's so raw, and it's so loud as well. I, I gotta show you this, just to remind all of you guys what we're dealing with right here. A 5.8 liter Trinity V8, pop in the hood of the GT500 Super Snake. It's got the carbon fiber engine appearance package, which includes the valve covers as well, as you can see over here. But I mean, this engine bay, I'm a major fan of it. It looks much more polished than the, the new 2020, in my opinion. It looks like it would be a good car show car, which I think a majority of people who buy these cars, they don't exactly race them on the racetrack. My biggest complaint with the GT500 Super Snake compared to the new 2020 is that the hood, it's not exactly functional to, to the same extent. So as you can see, we have the hood vents over there on either side, but if you look right here, you don't notice anything special, right? It's just a hood, it wraps around. So this entire hood vent right here is not actually functional. Why did they do that? Anyways, again though, 1,000 horsepower with this 2014 GT500 Super Snake. The question is, are all 1,000 horses usable? A big thing is that when you start adding a lot of power to a front engine rear wheel drive car, you may run into issues with grip. Now, this car comes with 285 tires in the front and 305s in the back. Shelby American actually puts on 295s, which I highly recommend that you change to 305s or even wider if you can fit them because Honestly, this vehicle, you need the stickiest, widest tires you can possibly buy because you're dealing with so much horsepower again. One last time, quick summary, front engine, rear wheel drive, 1,000 horsepower, weighs around 4,000 pounds, stick shift, well, manual transmission. We're gonna see how it compares to the all new DCT Shelby. Let's hop inside. Yes, as you can tell, the interior, it's uh, widely different than the new Mustangs coming out. It looks not as, um, cool in my opinion this looks more classic this being a manual car you have to obviously put in the clutch to start it so you can see that down there the clutch let's put it in let's put it in neutral for now and let's turn the key the whole car starts rumbling now the best part is that it's always in loud mode so all the time this is where you're listening to plus the exact tune that it comes with you can hear the pops and the crackles every single time i rev and i let off <laughs> Now the one thing about this car is that you can't drive it with traction control turned on because it cuts all the power. So in order to drive this car, you have to turn off traction control, which makes it a bit more fun and also makes it a bit more sketchy. You gotta have a lot of skill, I think, to uh, master and harness all the 1,000 horses. So click and hold. One really awesome thing is that whenever you go into gear, the feeling it gives you, it makes you feel like you're actually accomplishing something. Just listen to this thing. Okay, let's go. It's a bit scary to drive in this car sometimes. You gotta really be focused. And I mean like, versus the new 2020, you just, anyone can hop inside that car. The clutch two in this car, it's really heavy. Like, especially compared to the GT350. <laughs> that was no throttle at all. And as you can tell, we're already sliding all over the place. But the best part is though, we're always in control really the car is not gonna fly out and and just snap over here it doesn't feel like that at all i feel like the way it's composed put together this is just like a shenanigan car you want to get inside of this and get that tail end kicking around and just keep holding it and just keep going and going and going it never gets old and plus that was only 3000 rpm i think with these tires i don't know why shelly put on super sport tires with the super snakes because in my opinion, you need way, way more sticky rubber in the back. Like Mickey Thompson's, even Toyo R's would be great, I think. One really cool thing though is that the seating position in this car, you feel like you're driving a hot rod, a muscle car, because in front of you, you've got that massive hood, plus you've got these A-pillar gauges, a six-speed manual right here with that cue ball design 
it just feels raw. It doesn't feel super advanced and European like the new Mustang is coming out. This, in my opinion, feels like a true classic Mustang. Now, with this car having a stick shift transmission right here, that means we have a clutch. And with the clutch, you can do this. <laughs> much fun you have full control at all times when it comes to daily driving it's a lot of fun but then at the same time tedious and a lot of hard work because if you do get a bit too much throttle you got to always pay attention that you're not going to lose control it's a slight see like that <laughs> let's say you're trying to overtake somebody you give a bit too much throttle again the tail end can kick out on you so you always got to pay attention always got to watch what you're doing so shelby american put on anti-hop components with the gt500 super sync specifically we have watts link in the back one thing i do want to find out though is that how does this car compare to the new gt500 0 to 60 wise let's try to put on a, the 0 to 60 built-in timer and let's see if we can get a, a three second 0 to 60 with it hit okay to begin Check this out, I had to hop out and look at the ground. Look at this burnout trail we just left. Look how straight it is too. And it just keeps going and going and going. Oh my gosh, this car is insane. I'm still walking, I'm gonna start running. I'm still running and it's still going and it's still going. Excuse how jerky the camera is right now, but look at that. Now that's why you buy a super snake right there. So as you can see there, even launching this car at 3000 RPMs, it's having a really a hard time putting down the power. With this, you can't even use traction control because it just completely cuts all the power. So the best thing you can do is just to learn how to gradually control all the horses with this vehicle. <laughs> to really compare with the new GT500, this car needs to be drag equipped. So in, the, in its stock setup, with these tires, I don't think it'll be a close comparison accelerating, but once this car grips so it out accelerates the new GT500. As a daily driver, it's pretty smooth, honestly, and you don't get much drone at low RPMs driving. Now, let's say if you have 4,000 RPMs the entire time on the freeway, then that's a different story, right? But I think for what this car is, you can definitely live with it. Now, would this be a very good daily driver? I don't think so in California, at least because you're dealing with so much traffic all the time. Right now, it's pretty good because no one out right now. However, in dead stop traffic, bumper to bumper, it gets really hard because the clutch, it's so heavy. It is a racing clutch, a super twin clutch. And getting used to that and just stopping and going, stopping and going over and over again, basically spending hours in traffic, it's not fun at all. And this is the last car I think I'd want to be driving in those scenarios. Driving this car is always an event. You have to mentally prepare yourself before you get inside of it because you got to know ahead of time what you're dealing with. You got to be focused all the time. When you get out of this car, you feel like you've just gone through a major workout. Every single time I let off on the throttle or even downshift, it just automatically sparks those pops. And, and you can hold the pops actually for, for a long time, which is funny seeing everybody's reactions when you're doing it. Overall, if I could sum up this car, it makes you feel adrenaline all the time. You're always on edge. And plus, it makes you feel scared in a good way. <laughs> now let's check out the 2020 GT500. And now right behind me, we have the all new 2020 Shelby GT500. What's awesome is that we lucked out and got the 2014 and the 2020 in the same exact color. Now, unfortunately, you can't get this car with a uh, black stripe. There is one thing I really do want to stress is that these cars, they have completely different mentalities. So even though they have the same nameplates, GT500 and GT500, I don't think they can be any further apart. First of which is say goodbye to your manual transmission. We've got that DCT with the rotary dial gear selector. A lot of Shelby guys don't quite like it, but once you drive this vehicle and feel it and just experience the DCT, I mean, it feels like a true sports car. It feels like the exotics in that sense. The way it shifts, it's 
instant. There's no delay with the clutch being put in and you manually changing the gear, no. This allows you to use all 760 horsepower at all times. That being through each gear shift, there's different drive modes that allow you to over torque into the next gear. What I'm trying to say is that the power, it's always there, which allows this car to go down the quarter mile in 10.6 seconds. It actually, this car did it. Plus, from being driven a thousand miles a day before, it can easily run great performance numbers and then get back on the highway. It is very much down on power against the 2014 GT500 Super Snake. This has 760 again with 625 pound-feet of torque. But still, with that DCT, you can use all that power all the time. And with the 315 tires in the back, it can put down the power exceptionally well. Let's hop inside and take it out for a drive. I must say though, the interior with this GT500 right here, it's really nice. On the racetrack, you never have to move the placement of your hands. You can stay right here in downshift upshift or leave an automatic and let the car do the shifting itself plus you have carbon fiber all over the place in the interior it's just really cool and one of my favorite features of the GT 500s are the seats look how good these things look they, they hug you in perfectly for the racetrack and they're extremely comfortable as well it's leather on the outside and suede on the inside let's turn on the car one interesting thing about the previous gt500 that we have no clutch down there so my left foot just rests all the time and i can lay it over here to the left you have a brake pedal and a gas pedal just put your foot on the brake and then you can start the car. You have push button start with this vehicle compared to the turnkey start with the 2014 GT500s. Let's hit the button. We gotta make sure to turn on loud mode or track exhaust mode. Let's give it a few reps. The seating position in this car is really good too because the hood is not too high and Ford achieved that by flipping the supercharger upside down and putting it further into the V of the V8 so the hood itself is actually lower and looking at it the blades of those vents of the hood look awesome as well anyways let's get out of here we're in manual mode because that's the fun mode right but here we go driving now since this car has a dual clutch transmission Let's see if we can do a donut like a manual. Advanced track should turn off. Let's try to see if we can do a donut. It says hill start assist not available. Um, it says service advanced track. Um, okay, uh, well, that was fun though. Let's get back in the car. Let's get out of here. See, that's why horsepower is like the almighty. It's just the equalizer because horsepower, you can do anything, which is why I love these Shelby's, these GT 500s. If there's one thing they have in common, it's out of the horsepower. Okay guys, let's do a, a zero to 60 test. See how good it is compared to the uh, 2014 GT 500 Super Snake. Ex accelerate to start. However, when it's sunny out and the back tires get pretty hot, this car can easily go zero to 60 within three seconds, over and over again. I wanna show you guys though, what this car is like to daily drive, like on the freeway, in normal city traffic, just a good baseline, you know, competitor to the GT500 Super Snake. The downshifts, you just hit a button and you're in the next gear. It's like playing a video game, in my opinion. And plus, putting down the power. It, it doesn't spin at all. That's why I love it. The way this car corners too, it's so flat out. Here we go. Well, we were even on a slight corner and this thing just puts down the power. I feel so confident in this car, especially from tracking it. I mean, any gear, any RPM, full throttle it, and it puts the power down. It's just so easy to drive fast. And plus, if you don't want to shift, you don't have to. You can just put in automatic mode and let the car do all the shifting for you.
shifts, it makes you just want to drive fast. And I mean, the GT500 Super Snake cannot compete with that when it comes to those gear changes. This car is like playing a video game. And then a minute later, this car is completely docile. It's just easy to drive. You can completely tell how I drove this car across the country. You can tell that there's a lot of computer systems working together to help aid the entire driving experience. This car can do everything well. It can corner hard, keep up with the GT3s, and then out accelerate them at the quarter mile. The previous generation GT500s have always been more about just a straight line acceleration. The Boss Rio 2 was the track car of the day. And exiting the GT500, yeah, the experiences, they're just so different than each other. I mean, this car, driving this car is like playing a video game. It's so easy. Anyone can get inside of it and run a 10 6 quarter mile or just use all 760 horsepower. You don't need skill. And that's why it's really good, I think. The ride is soft and, and I could easily drive this every single day. It's just that tame. The GT500 Super Snake in comparison, that vehicle is on the edge. It's always edgy. You're always at the edge of your seat. And man, it makes you feel alive. It wakes you up. And you gotta know what you're doing to drive the Super Snake. Where this car exceeds is just how practical it can be and how easy it is to use. The GT500 Super Snake feels sketchy. And you're using a manual, a stick shift to control everything you are the one you're the driver this car the car does so much for you it makes it just fun to drive it's not hard if you want a performance car that you can use all its performance at all times this is gonna be the one you gotta buy the gt500 super snake in comparison it gives you non-stop adrenaline at all times you are the computer basically you are controlling all the horsepower the experience is completely analog compared to this car right here this is the future and the super snake is our past anyways thanks for watching this video if you liked it make sure to hit that like button it really does help me out and subscribe for much more great shelby videos coming your way stay tuned for our c8 corvette comparisons that's gonna be really fun i think i can't wait to take delivery i, I am so excited about it i'll see all of you in the next episode